Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 16 of the Posh Push, here with Peterborough in the Sky Bet Championship. Hopefully you guys are good. Uh, today we have a live com against Reading for you guys. Last episode, of course, if you missed it, it was against um, Wigan. Since then, I've only actually had two games to play. One win and one loss, both 4-1. Uh, the first game was actually a defeat to Watford, which was a little bit hard to take. It was an embarrassing defeat. It really was. So Watford have been struggling this year in the league for a long period. They were bottom of the league. Granted, they have hit a little bit of form of late, but still, when you're top of the league, playing teams in the lower half of the table, there is, a, a, I guess, an underlying expectation for you to go out there and really do well. And that just simply wasn't the case in this game. All five goals come in in the second half. There was actually two goals scored in the space of two minutes with one highlight. I think they're coming up here. Stevie May scores the first. He's actually a player who I looked at signing um, at one point. In fact, no, we went 2-1 down, actually. And then they got two almost immediately. But here you go. It's on Belonga. Uh, Keen, this was a really weird goal, actually, because there's just a, a stupidly long highlight before it. But I believe the goal was scored by a Sombolonga, if I can remember correctly. Which I can, excellent. Of course, Watford being his former club as well. So that was a pretty good one. Uh, but as I mentioned, however, Stevie May grabbing two this game in the space of a minute. His first comes here. Tidy little finish. Maybe Bob could do a little bit better. Uh, but unfortunately for us, the route was complete. Just two minutes later in the 74th minute, as I mentioned, straight from kickoff, we conceded again and it was Stevie May getting on the score sheet. Just a... A crazy few minutes where, uh, granted, we were chasing from being 2-0 down, but um, we left ourselves very exposed at the back and we paid the price for that. Fortunately, however, we did manage to get a 4-1 win, as I mentioned, in our favour. Uh, this was against MK Don to Sombolonga grabbing two, Federico Friere grabbing himself a goal as well. Um, we went 1-0 up in this game fairly early on, which was a good start. Obviously, after the last game, it was pretty painful to take. Uh, Freire there with an interesting finish, considering he doesn't have the best aerial ability to, uh, I guess, have the technique to volley it in from there was pretty impressive. Unfortunately for us, however, we didn't actually hold on to the lead for very long in this game. Boldock whipped in the ball and it was Danny Haynes, um, the pacey striker with a pretty cool, calm and collected finish there. But, as I mentioned, we did, we did get back into this game. Uh, a Sombolonga with a Route 1 goal there. That is literally park football. Just a big hoof over the top by Bob and a Sombolonga using his pace to get there. And then in the second half, uh, we extended our lead a little bit further. Uh, you'll see here, Freire has a knock. Um, I actually subbed him off during this highlight. Like Before this highlight started, I'd chosen to sub him off with his knock. Because I kind of felt like even at 2-1, we were in relatively good control here. But right before he comes off, even though he's injured, he still manages to grab himself an assist, I do believe, off the left wing. Which was kind of funny. It was um, one of those odd moments where I kind of wondered to myself, well, if the sub had gone through sooner, would uh, the replacement have been able to put in a ball like that? And the answer's probably not. So I was pretty fortunate there. And then I do believe this last goal of the game was an own goal, really just to pile on the misery for MK Dons. Oh, I know, this is a weird goal. This is a very weird goal. I just remembered what goal it was. We're going to have to go in 3D for this. We need to go deeper. Um, yeah, this was a very weird goal. Um, if, you, if you're listening in FM, because I know some people just listen with my videos, you probably want to tab out and watch this, because it's one of the weirder goals I've seen this year. Uh, so anyway, uh, Kakuta here. Um, ball hits the cro cro crossbar, hits the keeper on the leg. Then he runs back and picks it up and walks into his own goal. It was, It was rather weird. It was very weird, in fact. I mean, we'll watch it here in epic slow-mo, but um, I was a little bit confused watching this in 2D view, but as you guys know, I have it set up so I see the 3D, and it didn't even really make much more sense in 3D. It was just weird. I mean, I think he's run into his own net there. It was given us the own goal, but I don't know if that came from it hitting him, like, on the knee, um, or if it came from where he um, kind of just ran it into his own net. But regardless, it was weird. And uh, that was all she wrote for the match. So it finished 4-1. Uh, today we have a game against Reading. Uh, who are in fourth. And then I'm also, this episode, actually going to live com the game against Wolves. So we've got two for the price of, of one today. Because they are two fairly big games in this kind of way of our season, I guess. So, we're going to get into the Reading game. Hopefully we can step up our performances. We're on a little bit of an iffy run of form. You guys can see that here. We've... 
I mean, we've not had three wins on the bounce since the start of October, so that's basically two months where we've not really gone on a little winning run. Maybe we could kick on and do that this episode and get two wins in our two games that we're going to be covering. On the stats, you can see it's pretty much the same. Asan Belonga still leads to the goal-scoring charts. Will Hughes is tied top of the assist. Then actually Federico Freire has uh, kind of snuck onto this list playing out on the left. So that's really good to see. Of course, I harp on about three air because he's a really good free transfer you can pick up in FM. But anyway, we're going to go with our standard team here. Uh, I'm actually start playing Will Hughes, a l uh, Will Hughes, Will Keane a little bit more. It's annoying having two Wills in the team. Um, but no, playing Will Keane a little bit more. And he's doing quite well, to be honest. I'm playing him out on the right. He hasn't really got much of an opportunity to play his, his preferred striker role. But despite his poor crossing and dribbling, he actually contributes quite nicely out on the right. So... We're going to get into this. Reading are the favourites. The pundit says it's going to be a draw. He says Jacob Mellis is going to be a miss for us. I can agree with that. Jacob Mellis is a bit of a miss. But I do feel like we have enough quality in the centre of midfield not to fill the hit too hard. And that can't really ever be used as an excuse for us not winning this game. Uh, we, you know, We've got some very good centre midfielders like Mario Palacic, obviously Will Hughes, uh, Freire can slot in at centre mid, Edwards... It, it wouldn't really be an excuse not to win. But anyway, we've got a set piece here. Back post. Oh, it's a scramble. And I think that's been headed off the line. And now they are going to look to hit us on the break. These blue dots, they're not clashing. But I'm assuming you're having the same issue I'm having if you're watching this. That they are very similar. That was offside. Not even going to celebrate. Not even going to do it again. But these dots, they're not colour clashing. It's just a little bit awkward to tell the difference because they're both blue and white. But we're going to try our best. It's not unbearable, I don't think. Right. So right now, Reading having a lot more of the ball. But we are playing our counter tactic. And, I mean, we've already had one goal disallowed. So it's kind of shown that we are hitting them on the break. There's only been one shot of the game so far as well. But we've got to be careful here. Taylor with a goal for them. But back post header... I think it was a header. That's poor. That's poor, poor defender. Just, I mean, where is the left back? Just not picking up our men. Just not picking up our men. You can see here, you've got Briggs, and he kind of just doesn't get goal side. And the ball comes in, and Taylor's just there. That's a nice little header, to be honest. Placed it into the inside of the uh, left corner of the net. Hmm. Not happy. We'll see how we go into half time. I might have to mix things up a little bit. We're on, we're on the attack here. Maybe we can grab something. Edwards, Keane, gone, Will. Oh, he's got to bury that. I said that he doesn't have the best crossing or attacking ability. So when he cuts inside like that, I have a real expectation for him to do something um, for us, I guess. But anyway, that's been a really poor first half. We're 1 0 down. Show me something else. I'm going to whack out some instructions. I'm going to try and work the ball into the box. Right now, apparently, um, we're not creating enough chances in the opposition area, so hopefully that's going to help address that issue. We'll also, remove direct passing. Uh, we've not had too much of the ball, and that might be just because we're playing a little over direct, so I'm hoping that in just looking for us to exploit the space um, and kind of, I guess, look for little opportunities and work the ball into the box, we might be able to craft out a few better chances and free air there with a chance. To be fair, that was an insane save by McCarthy and goal, but it's a positive sign. And now you have another chance. Edwards. Oh, God. Royce and Drente on the attack. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's fast. That would have been an incredible goal if that had gone in. It didn't, though. So we, we live to fight another day here. The next goal is going to be big in this game, really. It's going to be... I, one thing I've noticed this year is, like, last year in League One, there'd be games where I'd be a few goals down. And I'd kind of go and start chasing that game and I was able to get back in it. Uh, whereas this year, in the championship, the team's qualities are a lot better. Um, and there's less of a gap, say, between me and them in terms of me being better than them. Uh, and that kind of creates an issue whereby when I do go to chase games, it's near impossible for me not to leave myself exposed. And there's a lot more of an element of a risk involved in going for it. But anyway, there's not long left of this game, so I'm going to make a few last changes. Um, and I'm also going to go a little bit more direct, I think, after um, this highlight, whatever this might be. 
And he shows Williams a straight red. Well, I've got to go on the attack now. They're down to 10 men. And I've got to look to do something in the last 10 minutes. Although 10 men in FM, I don't know, maybe you guys don't feel like this, but I feel like 10 men in FM is um, perhaps not as big a rare... What's the problem? A big, as big a problem, I guess, as it is in kind of real football. Um, right, how to approach this? I'm gonna be um, looking really just to. What's the word? Basically, just go out and attack here. Now we need to. You know, hassle the opposition. We need to go and hit them hard because we've not got long to try and chase this game. Um, we'll make a few changes like that. That actually works out quite nicely, to be honest. And then we'll have Hughes and Kakuta out wide and Hendrick and Edwards down the middle. Right, ten minutes to chase this game. They are down to ten men. Hopefully, we can make something of it, but it's going to be tricky. Also, change that to attacking. Right, 87 minutes in. Can we get a late goal? A draw here would still be a very good result if we could get it somehow. We've got a chance here. Russell! Oh, he's missed it. Samba longer with the rebound. Let's go. Come on, boys. That is important. Samba longer wins the ball really high up the park there. Risking it on a yellow card. I thought he might be about to get sent off. Russell with a nice effort. Keeper can only parry it. And a Samba longer's there. He's the most lively to the threat. And that is a great goal for us to grab there. We'll try and chase it for two more minutes, but I can't see it happening. But regardless, that is a good point rescued. Maybe there's a late chance. No, there's not. 1-1. One, one. It could be worse. We've had a lot better chances there. I'm going to tell the boys they're unlucky. We've, we've probably had the better chances there. Their keeper's got man of the match, which kind of says a lot, really. But um, regardless, that's still disappointing to take. Of course, that is the exact same result, I do believe, that we got when we played them at the start of the season. In terms of, yeah, it is. Both games have finished 1 1. So, um, yeah, it's not too bad. Although, unfortunately for us, we have now dropped into second behind Newcastle um, going into our next game against Wolves. So, that's a little bit of a disappointment. But at the same time, we do still have a five point gap onto Brentford with 21 games left of the season. So, Blackman wants to go on loan. Um, I need you as cover. He's basically a second choice keeper, but he wants to go out on loan. I don't have another choice keeper, so he has to stay, really, unfortunately. What does Ferdinand want to discuss? Um, I think a loan wouldn't actually be the worst option for this guy, to be honest. He's a pretty good player as well. He just needs a, some first-team football, and he isn't going to get that here at the moment. So we will offer him out for loan. Um... I've not been focusing too much on youth development yet on this save. And the reason for that being is that, obviously, there were some good youth prospects in the club. But given how sharp our rise has been, there's very few who are actually going to be um, worth the investment of repeatedly playing them. Uh, one of the exceptions to that kind of rule is, um, obviously, a Son Belonga, who's still relatively young at 22. Will Hughes, who, of course, is developing. Uh, and then Baldwin. Jack Baldwin's a player who... I think has a lot of potential to play with us in the Premier League. He's 21 now, but the centre back is looking very, very good. You know, he he's he, at this point he's a pretty good Championship player. And he could become a good Premier League centre back. So that's kind of what we're striving towards with him. Um, you can see as well, Will Keane has a lot of potential, but because of all the injuries he's had, um, that's really kind of slowed down his development. But still, you know, he he's not had the best season, and it's difficult to play him in a team behind a Sombolonga. Uh, sorry, ahead of a Sombolonga, you know, I can't really afford to pay him, play him up top when we've got a top goal scorer like Britt banging in goals for fun. Uh, Baldwin is pleased by uh, or encouraged by Baldwin's developments. See, even Fry knows what's up. He, he can hear me now. The game knows. Right as I'm, I talk about how well he's playing, I get a little email through saying his development's going well. And that's because he's playing first team football. Um, that's one of the biggest tips I can give someone looking to develop youngsters is if you can give them first team football and it's not going to hurt your team too much, just do it. Because it, it, and I'm not a massive advocate of loading players out. And the, the reason for that being is that unless they're going to get regular first team football at a club with top, top, top facilities, 
Um, I don't feel as if they develop as well as if you were to just play them in your under-21 side. They play every week for your under-21s and you can control their training schedules. Uh, and especially if you've got better facilities, of course. But anyway, just a reminder, auto saves, saves, saves. So if you've not already got it set up, go to your FM preferences right now and make sure you've got auto saves on. So that if one day you have a power cut, if one day your save goes corrupt, it's still alive. I actually have mine on weekly. That That's how paranoid I am. I've been affected enough by um, the game kind of randomly crashing and saves getting corrupt. Um, Mario Pasolic's, um loan is set to end soon. I'm going to probably extend it. I think that's off at the end of the season. Isn't acceptable. They want a 50% contribution, but because I'm an affiliate, I don't actually have to pay a contribution, but I have to wait for him to go back to Chelsea before I can loan him again without the commitment to pay his wages, which is really stupid. I think that might be a bug. I think. But anyway, regardless, we push on here into today's Wolves game. Michael Oliver will be the referee. As you can see here, our form has really been patchy. Um... We do have better goal difference than Newcastle, so we're going to kind of be hoping that they slip up. If we could get a win here, it would be pretty good in terms of just extending our lead over Wolves, who of course right now are the bottom team on the playoffs. It would just extend that cushion that we have to potentially 12 points if Sunderland were to win, or 13 if they slip up and obviously we win. But anyway, uh, going into this game, what does my system want to do? It wants to play Russell and Hendrick. Hmm, I can go with that, I think. We have got a few injuries, unfortunately, that you can see here. We don't have the biggest squad in the world. We actually have a squad of, I'm doing the math here, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 22 players. So it's not the biggest squad ever, but it's kind of a nice size, my squad. I'm kind of very happy with the balance of it. Um, I've not had any issues where I've had to play players completely out of position uh, from the off because of the injuries that I've had, which is a very fortunate position, especially with the kind of squad size that I mentioned that I have. But anyway, let's get into today's game. Um, going to encourage the players. I expect to win today. They're deeply in form. So I'm also going to tell the players I have faith in them. We're going down the passionate route. We are away from home again, so I am going to stick with the counter tactic. Uh, despite the fact that obviously it didn't work against Reading particularly well. But who knows, Wolves might seek this as an opportunity to go and get at three points and try and hammer us. So maybe we can look to exploit the frailties they leave at the back. I kind of feel like regardless of how this season... Oh, go on. Bury that. I kind of feel like... What I was going to say was... I kind of feel like regardless of how this season ends, this has still been a very, very good year. Oh, it's gone just over. That was a really good opportunity two minutes in to get a win, uh, get the lead even. Um, but no, what I was going to say was, like, this season's gone very, very well. Like, to, if you've ever played FM, you'll know adapting to the championship is never easy. Um, I was kind of always planning for that, even in League One with a lot of my signings. Um, but I kind of feel like we, what we've got now is a very, very strong championship side. Will Hughes has been an absolute revelation for us. Of course, he got relegated with Derby last year. Um, same with Hendrick, really. Hendrick hasn't had as big of an impact, but Will Hughes, top of the assist charts, one of the top performers in the league. Uh, obviously, we did break the club's um, transfer record to buy him in, but um, he, he's really making up for lost time, I guess, because last year he didn't develop particularly well, even though he played a lot for Derby because they weren't doing very well as a team. I feel like collectively, because he's playing with a good set of players here at Peterborough, because we're playing some nice football, and because it's kind of working in our favour, I guess, um, how we play, um, he's he's playing a lot more football and he's been more successful on the pitch, and that has helped his development leaps and bounds. Anyway, uh, I'm going to tell the players that uh, you weren't bad but you can still improve I'm going to tell these guys it assertively they loved it and no, they didn't even react nothing noted but anyway let's get into the second half 0-0 would not be the worst result in the world but I'd still be pretty disappointed at this point to slip up in both these games would be bad Danny Bart we're hitting the post there good 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 defending there's a lot of clear cut chances falling either way <laughs> Right now, I'm not sure how it's nil-nil. I've got to be honest. But anyway, we're on the attack here. Go on, Hendrick. Hughes. A Sombolonga. Oh, that's a great block there. That was going in. That counted as a clear-cut chance. That is unfortunate. 
That was some good defending there by Wolves, but still some promising signs. There's still plenty of time for either team to score here. 35 minutes and counting left on the clock. Hmm. I have to think about how I want to change my game here if I'm, if I'm going to chase it. I kind of feel like right now it's probably not worth chasing this game and a point would be a better situation to find ourselves in. Russell, because we are creating... Oh, he's offside. We're not creating... It's not... A case of we are not creating chances. We've not just not had that cutting edge. Um, let's make a change. Actually, I'm going to make a minor change. I'm going to play Wilkie out on the right, but I'm going to play him as an inside forward, and we'll see how that works in our favour. I'm also tempted to bring on Mendes Lane. He's not actually played for us this year. In fact, he's made one sub appearance, but he was one of our best players last year. Freire's not had the best game and he's been a little bit jaded, so we'll do that swap. Who knows, maybe those two guys can contribute something uh, in the closing stages of this game. But anyway, we'll keep an eye out for them on either wing, just adding a little bit more pressure, I guess. Although they've now got a chance. Corner comes in, there's a scramble, get it out. I don't know how that's not gone in. Wow, some fortunate defending there. But we live to fight another day with 10 minutes left. Can our subs make an impact out wide? Mendes Lane gives away the ball immediately. Ismaili, or Ismail even. I don't know why I said Ismaili. I'm half asleep. Where am I? I've got a bit of a sore throat. You may well have noticed that. I sounded like dead almost. I don't know how you sound dead, but my voice has definitely seen better days. Oh gosh, they're on the attack. Wow. Oh, Wolves score in the 84th minute. And suddenly, there's a load of pressure on me to go out there and do something. Let's just pause. Right. Err. I'm going to play Will Hughes as a makeshift striker, I think. His stats aren't too bad for a deep-lying forward, to be honest. Um, right, we're going to go with that. I'm just going to go for this game at this point. Might as well. We've got nothing really to lose here. They've got six minutes to try and blitz their goal. I might regret not making any tactical changes sooner, unfortunately. But Oh, that's a shame. Last-minute goal there, grabbing Wolves a one-goal lead and Baldwin there with a silly foul but I think that's going to be all she wrote and it is still that's disappointing that is disappointing Look, the, the, my assistant has taken the words right out of my mouth there I'm far from pleased boys mm, how did Newcastle do Newcastle won so they're going to extend a lead over us Brentford drew however so it could have been worse but regardless that is a bitterly disappointing defeat to take but we do retain a four-point cushion, so it could have gone worse, I guess. Right, guys, I'm going to wrap things up there. Uh, next episode will be the game against Newcastle. Um, that is at the end of the transfer window. Who knows, there may be some new additions in the side to speak of then. So, yeah, guys, as always, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash the like button. It really does help me out. I do greatly appreciate it. And other than that, I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.